Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the show. Ooh, a black box. What could that mean? This is a first look, meaning we have something that doesn't even exist in the real world yet. Well, it does, because obviously it's here, but it's not up for sale yet. It's a pre-production. This is so close to production. If this works out, well, you guys are, this is almost ready. What is it? Can you read this? Can you read what this says? It says LC 5.1300 T2. What could that mean? I don't know, but if we open this box up, oh yeah, we've been dreaming about this amp for a while. Let's open this thing up and take a first look at it and talk about some of the cool new features that it's going to have as well as all the updates that we know about on this product. And of course, at the end of this, we're going to put it in Fernando's car and we're going to get a chance to listen to it and see how it sounds. Let's get rolling, guys. So one of the most talked about amplifiers on this show has been the five channel amplifier that Audio Control has been talking about now for like, I don't know, 18 months, Fernando? Yes, sir. We're finally to the point to where we have one that we can actually install and do something with. It has gone through several changes and revisions and updates. That's what happens when you design a product. You put all this cool stuff up on a whiteboard and you say, I would like this, I would like that, I would like this. And then as you work your way through the 24 to 18 month process, things start to change and morph and reality sets in and budget set in and everything just happens. What all that hopefully leads to is a product that you can be proud of. And they should be definitely proud of this one because it's it's something to, it's something to behold. Like all audio control amplifiers, it has this cool beauty cover over the top of it, which is easily removed by removing the two Allen head screws here, which are in the box. And it comes in a bag like this. Thank you, Fernando. Because this is a pre-production, there is no owner's manual in the box. It didn't come in a bag. It didn't come with all the things that you would normally see. And there are going to be things that may change between now and when this actually hits the store. They've allowed us to do this to get you guys excited about it because this is the closest we've come to this amplifier. We've already loosened it up and we can pop it off. If you've never installed an audio control amplifier, there's also two Phillips screws here that do not need to come off. They're meant to attach here and here. And as you remove these, this panel will slide forward and pop off. That unveils the adjustments for the amplifier. They're gonna make two versions of this amplifier. This is the LC, which means this is a straight analog style, meaning it has knobs and dials and buttons and switches. And then they're gonna have the D, which is gonna be the DSP version of it, which won't have any of this stuff. It'll just all be lights to indicate things that are happening. Of course, there'll be a USB port on the side of it in order for you to plug it into your laptop and do all your settings. If you've never worked with their software, it is Windows and Mac compatible. And if you add the Bluetooth dongle to it, which you can on the D, not on the LC, it is also iPad and Android compatible, or you can adjust all your DSP settings from that. Today we have the LC. Let's get close on here and see See what we have. There's a ton of things that Audio Control puts into these amplifiers that are unique to them and they're exciting and I want to talk about it. When this amplifier lights up, you're going to see a blue light that shines out of the back here. That's because there's blue LEDs inside of this. It's designed to make this wave look right here really pop out as well as if you put them underneath the seats, it does add a nice accent light up back. Looking at the top of the amplifier, there's a lot of things on here that you kind of have to understand the input side of the amplifier to understand why there's some of these extra knobs here. Let's flip it up and take a look at that first and then we can come back and hopefully explain this and make some sense of it. The reason why Audio Control calls this an LC is for line output converter. That's what they're made for. The LC7i, the LC2i, the new LC2i Pro, the LC1i, the LCQ1, LC8i. They make a ton of high level to low level adapters and they're kind of the gold standard of high level to low level adapters. So they knew when they were gonna design amplifiers that they had to take that technology that they're known for and put them into the amplifier. What makes these amplifiers unique is this is a five channel amplifier, which means it's gonna have six channels of RCA input, which most five channel amplifiers do. Some five channel amplifiers will just have five channels of input. That's normal. This section over here though, is where this gets quite unique. If you pull one of these things out, you'll notice it has four inputs, which is gonna be a positive and negative for two speakers. But there's one here, one here, one here. There's, there's four, which is odd, because if you look back over here, there's six. The reason why it has this is what makes these amplifiers 
amplifiers, and that's all of the LC and the D amplifiers unique, is it gives you summing built into the amplifier. On the LC, it gives you summing for channel one. Now, why would you want that? Well, let's say you're doing an install in a car where there's two channels of front audio on left and two channels on right. Let's say you have a tweeter or a tweeter in a mid-range on channels one and two of a factory amplifier, and then three and four of the two mid-bass. That kind of limits what you can do. You have to either put some form of external summing device in there, like an LC7i or an LC8i, or it would be neat if you could just bring all those wires in the amplifier and worry about it in the amplifier. Well, because that's what they're known for, they put that feature into the amplifier. Notice right here it says front high, and down here it says front, and then it goes to rear, and then it goes to sub. And what you typically see on an amplifier that has six channels of input is you'd see front, rear, sub input. By adding this extra input, now you have eight channels of input instead of six channels of input. I can take those front tweeters or those front tweeter mid-range and put them here. I can also take my front mid bass and go here. I can go rear, I can go sub. Or if I have a fully active front set where it comes with tweeter and a mid-range and I wanna bring those together so that I can just have those on one channel, I could do that. So there's all kinds of combinations you can do where you're utilizing this front high input and this front input combining them together. And once we get to the top of the amplifier, this is gonna make even more sense. Let's keep going. Input here for a bass knob, which it tells you right here on the top which one you're gonna need, which is the ACR1. That's another great thing that Audio Control does is it tells you which bass knob you need because they make a couple bass knobs depending on what you're doing. If you have the D amplifier, you're gonna want the ACR3. Over here is our outputs. These come right off. It is a bigger output input, so you can't confuse them and plug them in wrong. On the top, your front, rear, and the sub is an input for up to an eight gauge wire. Speaking of wire inputs, your power inputs are going to be up to zero gauge, and it has 430 amp fuses on it. The remote turn on is located here in the middle. Let's take a look at those top controls. The first thing here is gonna be channel one. There's a lot of knobs here. You're going, why do I have all these knobs? Well, it falls back to high level. If you're gonna be using this as a low level input, that's fine, plug all those in, and disregard this gain pod right here that says front high level, because you're not gonna be using it. However, if you're gonna be using it as a high level input, speaker wires, and that is the gain control for the front high input. What this allows you to do is mix in that channel. You have your main gain control here that you're gonna adjust, and you have this here to bring the two together. That allows you to control the level of, let's say, that tweeter channel coming into this front channel. If they're too loud, you can turn them down. If they're not loud enough, you can turn them up. This gives you the control to blend them with this channel. And then, of course, this gain gives you the standard gain control that you would use. On this side, you have your power and protect lights, green and red. GTO signal sense is over here. GTO stands for great turn on. It uses DC offset, which is a six volt, comes over your speaker line to turn the amplifier on and off. It's extremely reliable and works very well. If you have something that does have remote turn on though, and you'd like to use that, just switch it to off, run your remote turn on in. Next to the high level gain control is going to be your crossover, and of course your switch for how to use your crossover. So there's a solid white box on the bottom, and then a number above that. You get high, off, and low. Your high output starts between 300 hertz and goes all the way up to 3K. This channel is designed to be running tweeters. In the low setting, it'll go between 30 hertz and 300 hertz. It is still a high pass crossover. It is not a high and low pass crossover. It is just made for high. The reason why they call it high is because it's for the higher frequency in that high pass range. It has two high pass crossovers on it. If you're gonna be running a tweeter, you use high. And if you're gonna be running anything other than the tweeter or the high frequency mid range, you would use low. And they are simple switches that you just flick back and forth and knobs you turn up and down. If you're gonna be using some form of external DSP, just leave it off. The mono input mode. And then the last thing over here is your gain control. For what we're gonna be doing with this, we're gonna leave our crossover off and our gain control down. We want it in stereo, GTO is off. Next is our channel three. And the first thing we wanna look at here is this. This is the sum for channels one and two to three and four. What does that mean? If the stereo I'm connecting this up to, we're only gonna be using inputs one and two. So for example, if we're just gonna be using this on front and the front output is just a left and a right, well, there's no reason for us to like connect two of these together and put jumpers in or anything like that. It'll do it internally. We just select inputs one and two. Inputs one and two will now 
feed inputs three and four. Essentially what I've done is I've put four wires into this, two positives, two negatives, or a positive and negative and a positive and negative, and I'm using channels three and four for mid bass and channels one and two for tweeter. Because of that, this has a band pass crossover built into it. The first is the high pass crossover. The second is the low pass crossover. This is where it gets kind of confusing when you talk about a band pass crossover. Think of it like this. The high pass crossovers always stay the same. That is going to be the lowest point that that speaker is going to play down to. That is variable between 30 to 300 hertz. If you select high pass on the switch here, which is over to the left, it will just be that, a high pass filter. If you're going to run this on front, rear, sub, you would select low pass crossover on the front. You'd select high pass crossover on the rear. If you're going to run this tweeter mid-range, you're going to select high pass crossover for this because you want the ultra high pass. And then you're going to select band pass here. Cool thing if you'll notice, you'll see this white box here and this white box here and no white box, no white box. What they've essentially done is if you're going to run it front and rear, you just select the non-white box. If you're going to use it for tweeter and mid-range, you select the white boxes. It's not as confusing as it may sound. They've kind of thought this through. If we're selecting band pass, we have the adjustments between 500 and 5000. Each one of these uses a Linkwix Riley crossover. Next is my mono stereo, just like is located here. And we have our master gain control for channels three and four. Moving on to the sub channel five and six. The first thing up, just like located here, is our input. Are we going to be using channels three and four or are we going to be using five and six? If we feed one and two into three and four, we can also feed that same input into five and six if we leave it on three and four. What that means is that if we run one high level input or one line level input into channels one and two, we can then populate all of these inputs for the amplifier. But we can also just run inputs one and two in for front. And if we have something that is sub, we could run that into five and six and that will feed this subwoofer. One of the patented features that Audio Control is most known for is their AccuBase, which is designed to fix bass roll off. Bass roll off happens when you are turning up and down your volume knob and as the volume gets louder, the sub starts to roll off. It's a loudness feature built in there to prevent your speakers from blowing as well as making them sound better at lower levels. Problem is we don't listen to things at lower levels, we listen to things at higher levels. AccuBase is designed to fix that using the threshold and the level control here. There is a switch to turn it on and off. You wouldn't have AccuBase on if you're going to be using the RC inputs because you don't need to fix that problem. However, if you do leave it on, you can use AccuBase as a bass boost if you feel you need one. Channel five and six, which is just a fifth channel, it's not a sixth channel, is just a low pass and it's variable between 30 and 300 hertz. On the very end of the amplifier located here, there's a group of LEDs and these are very important. The milk, which is your input sensitivity. When this light comes on, your volume is too much. You're clipping your input on your amplifier. When your maximized light comes on, which is one and two, three and four and five and six, that's used for setting your gain. So as you turn your gain up, playing your test tones, as that light comes on, you know you've gone too far. Dial it down until the light turns off. As you can see, this amplifier is a pretty sophisticated, very high tech, what I would call basic amplifier, because it's just straight power. But they've added in those extra features that you can only get on like DSP amplifiers or by adding extra parts. These are all built in, so it makes things super cool. And this is one of those amplifiers that can just go into things and you don't have to worry about it. So if you're putting it in and you're like, I have a set of tweeters in my dash and a mid bass in the door, and I, I don't know if I have four wires or if I have eight wires, the tweeters on their own channel, these things these amplifier can just deal with because it has those extra inputs. Naturally, the question everyone is gonna ask is how much power does this beast have? It's gonna be 100 watts by four and 300 by one at four ohm, and it's gonna be 200 watts by four and 500 by one at two ohm. We know that most people are gonna be running one through four at four ohm, getting 100 watts out to there, and they're gonna be running that sub at two ohms and getting 500 watts out that way. That's how 99% of these are gonna be ran. Let's take this into the car, hook it up, we'll set up our gains, get all that taken care of, and we'll take a little listen and just do a little pre-production, you know, see how it sounds. Make sure it ticks all the boxes and sounds good.
For those of you guys who have never caught one of these before, this is the Stereo Lab. It's Fernando's car. In the back, we have a workbench. It's got power, ground, high level, low level, everything we could possibly need. There's amplifiers already in there so that we can test processors, we can test subwoofers. We can do whatever we want and test in his car. We have a nice set of components up front so we can sit and listen to him. In this particular setup, we'll be using channels one and two to power the tweeters, three and four to power the mid bass, and the fifth channel will be going off to a subwoofer. This is a front stage only with sub. Perfect for this amplifier, pretty excited. With the amplifier in place, we're gonna play some test tones and set our gains and get them all set up properly so we don't make nothing go bad or smoky smoky. Turning the amplifier on, you see that beautiful blue light that comes out of there. Look at that, oh yeah, it's so cool. Your green power light will light up, you just don't wanna see that red one right there. We're gonna set the gain on channels one and two first. We're running RC inputs, so we're not gonna be using the high input. We do not need to worry about the gain adjustment for that. Because channels one and two are gonna be powering tweeters and we have an external crossover attach them through a DSP, we're gonna start by playing 8,000 hertz at negative five dB and turning our gain up. We're looking over here on our maximized input channel one light to come on, like it did there. And then we'll slowly turn it down until that goes away. We'll move on to channels three and four, which is our mid-range channels. For that, we'll switch to 1,000 hertz, negative five dB. Slowly start turning up our gain. We're looking over here for that light to come on, and it is on. Turn it down until it goes away. Last is our sub-channel, which will be playing 40 hertz, negative five dB. Start turning it up slowly. As we can see, it comes on, turn it down, and it's off. There we go, we've maximized their input sensitivity. The thing you have to keep in mind why they call it maximized is that's the maximum you want to play it depending on what your gain overlap is. In this case, we're going for negative five dB. That does not mean you have to leave it there. Mm -hmm. That's just as far as you're gonna turn it up. More than likely, we'll be turning those tweeters down. We know now that they're the loudest they could possibly play. Which chances are good, we, we don't want that, right? Okay, maybe we do. <laughs> All right, whatever. I'm gonna plug the speaker wires back in because you did have to make sure you unplugged your speakers, crossovers, and all that. There should be nothing plugged into the amplifier's output while you're doing that. We'll get that and we'll hop in the car and take a listen. Do you hear anything? You hear any floor noise or anything like that? Wow, that's like, it's... the ringing in my ears is loud. It's so quiet. We're doing a floor noise test just to see where the gains are on the amplifier, if there's any noise or anything like that. And it is it is mouse fart quiet here. <laughs> it's, there is no noise going no. on. Yeah, it's really quiet. In case you guys are wondering if you've never seen it before, what we use for a source unit is the Sony GS9. We've put a lot of lot Different of equipment. Yes, in this car. Mm -hmm. The default amplifier in this car is the audio control ACMs, which okay. are nice amplifiers. They're they're compact, they're small, and that's why they're in here. Yeah. We've tried several, like he said, different amplifiers in here. The joy for me is that I get to pop in, he gets to drive it every day. So he gets used to hearing something. Me, I always get into the car and I'm like, oh wow. Mm -hmm. But immediately the thing that struck me as like Mm, the depth to the music. I know that's one of those weird descriptive terms. Yeah, it's because like until you don't hear it. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can say whatever, but it's like... Not saying that other amplifiers don't have it. No, A lot no, of no. amplifiers do. Yes. But right away, it's just this has that very spacious sound that audio control, in my mind, is known for. It, whatever their salt and pepper is that they put into their amplifiers, it's yeah. immediately noticeable. And it sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds beautiful big mm -hmm. it, yeah. it has this really big sound to it and this car is small like you guys it's like yeah it just sounds feels big. the whole thing in there again the joy of being able to test different amplifiers is you get these fun results and you get to play and you get to be like oh oh that's different and mm -hmm. that's cool and that's exciting this is that this is yeah. cool we love testing new products because we love the ability to listen to them and be like damn that's mm -hmm. nice these amplifiers are almost done so we know this is what they're gonna sound like First look at the new Audio Control LC51300 pre-production. T2, yeah. test two, test either two. way. We hope you guys enjoyed this as always. What do you got, Fernando? All right. I like the music, but I was hoping for on to the next one. On to the next one, guys. All right, now press play. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you later next time.